Death Metal Interview. And we have for you a death metal project here, a brand new super group, if you will, uh, by the name of Arise from Worms. Yes, uh, that's the name of the project and the band. Um, I want to say it's led by Sonny uh, Lombardosi, uh, guitar great, uh, former incantation guitar player, of course. This is his uh, newest project, Arise from Worms, which includes an uh, all-star lineup of Steve Tucker on the vocals and uh, bass, I believe. But uh, as we speak to Sonny, he reveals that there is another a bass player that will be doing the bass duties for the band uh, on the live aspect of it, if you will. And uh, on the drums, you have Flo uh, Monier uh, of Cryptopsy, the great Cryptopsy. For all you death metal fanatics, man, this is an extreme metal uh, project. Very, very cool song out there. Anyways, let's cut it short here one more time. And let's go with the interview with Sonny of Arise from Worms. Enjoy. Did you like the single? Oh, man. It's just incredible, man. You know, it's just one of those, uh, it sounds like nobody. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I woke up this, this morning before I was heading into the studio here, and everybody was just like, dude, it really has a fresh sound to it, you know? Uh, especially with all those players on there, you know? I think some people think, you know, you have drummer from cryptopsy or you know steve from morbid and stuff they think it's going to sound exactly like that or yeah. something you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was expecting a you know a morbid angel kind of uh cryptopsy <laughs> yeah yeah a lot of guys were it was so funny because uh, uh, a lot of the younger shredder kids you know they're like dude you got tap for the song you know for some of the arpeggios and i was like <laughs> Oh, I didn't even think that far ahead. <laughs> you know, I was just like trying to get it out, and it was just so, you know, so stressful getting it out because it took a little longer than, than what we wanted, you know. But uh, but it's finally here, right? <laughs> I saw some interview where you speak of uh, when you were in incantation and you weren't able to, to I don't want to say, I guess you weren't able to express yourself exactly guitar-wise, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, um, it, uh, you know, we were going in to record that album and, uh, you know, I was, everybody's bringing stuff to the table, you know, which yeah. kind of made that album kind of unique, you know, um, but so much stuff, uh, was deleted and taken off cause they just thought it was too much, Yeah, you know, um, and actually the, the last solo in this single was a solo for that album. And they took it off because they're like, dude, this is just way too much for us, you know? So yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize I was pounding metal too hard for them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, too me it's too metal for incantation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, but uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, y yes and no. Y you know, I mean, I was happy because, you know, um, you know, there's a few songs on there that, that, uh, that I kind of rewrote and stuff like that when they had the ideas and, uh, I would take it and put it in certain keys and, and you know, um, like Black Phantom's Fire. You know, I mean, the intro, the main verse, and part of the chorus, I, I rewrote all that. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> into, uh, like, a double harmonic minor. Yeah. Uh, key to give it a little more of the Egyptian darker sound than what the original was, you know. So I yeah. mean, I had a lot, lot to do with that. A lot of the harmonies and and stuff like that, and 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 writing of of that that I didn't get credit for. Really? Wow. Yeah, it was just uh, I didn't get upset until you know that started getting playing. <laughs> you know? I mean, but, uh, yeah, it's just stuff that uh is. Maybe it's not incantation, I guess, according to John, uh, John's uh, uh, writing stuff, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's no matter, but, you know, because there was two songs that I wrote that didn't even make the album. Oh. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, it's um, no matter what would have came out, it would have sounded like incantation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you have Kyle's drumming, you yeah. have his his vocals, you know. So, yeah. I mean, I could have did arpeggios from hell on there, but they're just not a shred band, yeah. you know. Um, they're just, weren't into that. And, um, you know, the the past five, six years that I was touring with them, you know, I mean, how many younger kids were like, dude, you know, it's all this shred guitar alive, but why isn't it on any of the albums? 
<laughs> you know, and yeah. so this, you know, that vial, uh, set, what you know, whatever it's called, um, I started saying, well, what, you know, let's try and get some of this stuff on there, and then, you know, as soon as they turned an arpeggio, it was just like the, you know, Jesus fell at the sky or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, you know, uh, just, uh, um, you know, situation with that, it just, um, you know, I got the news after the Morbid Angel tour, and then uh, <clears throat> it was just, uh, I was already talking to uh, Tucker at the time. Yeah. Because uh, we were touring together, and I says, hey, you know, I'm, I want to put together some songs, and, and are you interested? And he says, yeah, here's my number, and and uh, so we stayed in contact, and then after the, uh, you know, the news dropped of, of what happened, um, I just went in the studio, and I never left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and... That's good, uh, that's good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we got the, the tracks together, and then, uh, you know, there was another drummer that was going to do it, and then, you know, a month went by, two months went by, three months went by, and I was just like, oh, my God, what's going on here? So then that's when uh, uh, Tucker suggested, uh, you know, flow of cryptopsy. So uh, I sent him an, a message, you know, and he says, send the material up. And he goes, cool, I'll book studio time, and we'll get it done. And I was like, Jesus, that was quick, you know. Yeah. So um, wow. we got his drums, and then we sent, like, uh, sub-mixes down to, you know, Tucker, and then so he could work at, because uh, he has his own studio now. Okay. Um, in his studio. And then while he was doing that, I was laying down bass. And then uh, the leads I didn't do till last because I wasn't sure where he was going to put vocals. You know, so uh, yeah. as yeah. soon as he was done, then I started laying down all the all the lead stuff and harmonies and yeah, all that, that type of stuff. So, so you recorded uh, the bass parts, right? Yeah, I did all the bass. Yeah. Yeah, I did all the bass and... Uh, yeah, we had to get a, a seven-string bass for some of that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> because I, well, what I wanted to do was is the leads um, on, on that song, and the rest of the EP is filled with it, is the bass is doing note for note with the guitar solos. I saw that, yeah, I heard that, yeah. Yeah, so it was kind of really, really influenced by Billy Sheehan and Steve I back in the day. For sure. You know, when they, when they used to do the double bass and, and guitar stuff, you know, because yeah. I had one guy goes, hey, there, hey, there's no bass on the tra on the, on the, on the, on the single. And I go, oh, no, dude, that, that's bass that you're hearing. It's, it's, it's on the guitar. He goes, oh, I hear it now, you know, because he just didn't know, you know what I mean? And if you're not exposed to something like that, then you don't know, you know. Wow. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that that was the main influence was was Billy Sheehan for this EP. I mean, uh, it's crazy to say that because I'm a guitar player, but That's... I mean, I spent a lot of time on the bass to to get it to where it was smooth because I can't play with my fingers, so I had to use a guitar pick, and I didn't want that harsh pick sound. Yeah, yeah, you know, or it was like you know the clicking, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it took me a while uh, to to learn how to play bass smooth. You know, without hitting it hard, you know, because a guitar player is going to hit hard. Yeah. And if you hit super hard on a bass, it's going to go boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to study know? the uh, text. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it took me a while to get that, you know. And then I remember uh, Tucker was saying, he goes, I didn't know the bass was going to do all that stuff. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so so uh, there you go. Exactly. I, I was trying to pinpoint what that sounded like, that, that bass part with the lead. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like... Uh, uh, Mr. Big, you know that uh, addicted to that rush and all that, all that stuff. Uh, she and all that. Yeah, when they did the the dual, the yeah. dual guitar and bass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I couldn't pinpoint it exactly. So yeah, yeah. So what did Tucker have to say about about those leads? Can uh, not to undermine his playing, but can can he pull it off? I mean, <laughs> uh, we're he's just gonna sing. Um, oh, uh, we're gonna get a bass player. Um, you know, if it comes to it. Oh wow. Um, he, I think his name's Jared. He's in uh, Vancouver. Um, he's in a tech band, but I can't, I can't think of the band. It's they've been around for a while, but it's new for me. You know, I, I call them younger kids because you know I'm yeah. kind of old school. Yeah. But uh, I just can't think of the name of the band. But it's it it it's kind of in the style of those bands of like Beyond Creation, Obscura. Yeah. Um, stuff. But I can't think of the band. They're, they're doing really well for themselves too. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I can't, just can't think of any band name. <laughs> <laughs> I can't picture Tucker without a bass. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, he's got, you know, he's got so many uh, cool projects going on. I don't, I don't think he minds. You know. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow. You know, so. so I also uh, read an interview where you don't sound too excited about touring or getting in a, in a van somewhere across the states or something. <laughs> uh, as far well, as far as touring, you know, I want to tour and I want to make this project happen. Yeah. Uh, for a tour, you know, and if we can get a good package to where you know everybody can do it comfortably, um, of, course, of course, of course, and, and they have time because I have to work around Morbid Angel and Cryptopsy and stuff, you know. And if it's if it's good, we'll do it, you know. Um, but as far as like you know, fifteen guys in a little white van going across Europe again, yeah. I'm just too old, man. I, I can't hang, you yeah. know? I mean, uh, it, it's just, you're, you're trying to sleep sitting upright and your head's banging off the side of the van and, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, and it was cool. And it was, you know, great to see all those different cultures of all those countries and meet all those people, you know, but, yeah. uh, man, if you're not getting your rest, you're just, you're just not playing your best, yeah. you know? And, uh, that's exactly. happened quite a few times where I'm like, Oh man, we gotta you know, I'm on stage and oh, we gotta drive tonight, oh I gotta drive, all oh, this that, you know. <laughs> and I'm not thinking of the show. Yeah. You know. I'm thinking what we gotta do after the show. And and I just don't wanna do that anymore, you know, because it just it does take away, you know, from from your performance, even though how hard you're trying to, to get into it, you know. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a musician too here in Texas and uh uh you know, it's just small stuff, you know, local uh, we travel here and there, San Antonio and different places, but I do understand uh, uh, what what all that is in a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, we did. Uh, we we opened up for uh, Dying Fetus. Oh wow! And we did almost five and a half weeks on the road, and I drove every night the RV. Damn! Wow! So we would I would drive all night long, <laughs> unload yeah. into the venue, sound check, play, and then have to drive again. All all night long again i did that for like five and a half weeks and i was like i can't do that anymore it was just uh it's too much it's yeah. Dangerous. yeah it's too it's dangerous for one thing yeah. you know what i mean to to do that you know but i mean i remember i think i was in boston we were doing a show and i was like i was so tired i mean i was just like you know and i never want to think like that again it's just like oh my god i just want to lay down yeah you know it was just uh it, it wasn't a good experience, you know. But everybody said I still sh I shredded okay, so I guess maybe I was an autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, didn't yeah. Re didn't realize it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> autopilot kicked in, yeah. Yeah. So talk to us about the, the the acoustic piece in there that you talk about. Is it classical? Is it, uh, what is this? Uh, oh, the Paganini thing? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the last track. It, it's just a bonus track we threw on. Um. And uh, it has like the uh, uh, cellos, it has violins on it, um, clarinet uh, with the guitar and the bass. And uh, technically it was going to be a lot longer, but we just had so many recording problems with phase cancellation and everything when you're record trying to record yeah. uh, those stand-up instruments, you know. And it was just like the papers, you know, moving and chairs screeching. And so we had to uh, have a couple of the guys come in and... Uh, they had electric cellos and, and stuff like that, you wow. know, so we plugged in and, and did it that way just to, to save what we could. And uh, But it still came out pretty good. I mean, it's just basically a Pagani, yeah. uh, classical arpeggio thing, you know. I never thought there'd be clarinet, you know, while I'm doing an arpeggio underneath me, you know. <laughs> 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 you know, especially on a, a Death Metal album coming out. And I almost was not going to put it on there, and I, I sh you know, I played it for Flo and a couple other guys. I'm like, no, dude, it sounds really cool. Yeah. You know, they're like, leave, leave it on there, man. I think people appreciate it, you know, because I was just like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you know, type. Having, you know, you second guess yourself sometimes, you know. Um, but it came out cool. I just wish that it was a lot longer and we could have saved a lot more of the material. But, uh, awesome. you know, we're already talking that for the full length of having more time to spend with it, you know. So it's not a such a short song, you know. But uh, So did that come from your school? I know you studied music, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Uh, oh, I was young. Um Went to classical guitar school. I studied jazz for years, and a lot of the uh, couple guys that you know that sent me messages, they're like, "Dude, the the lead playing, the runs are just so smooth. It's very j jazzy." And I says, "That's funny because I studied jazz, and that's what I used." <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, so all those leads and everything you're hearing is all just sped up jazz licks. Very and true. Then, uh, and then uh, most of the 
solos that I did on that last In Can album are all jazz licks too. Wow. So that's so that's what's kind of giving me that little bit of an out sound. Yeah. You know, uh, type thing, and a little bit of the f- more fluent is just um, instead of doing your basic like root third fifth, I would start adding the sixths and added ninths and yeah, you know, hey, let's do a a major seventh flat five out of eleventh. Up here, you know. And I'm, well, hold on, let me let me see if I can do it on bass first, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah so. I I, under, I understand that a little bit. Uh, I studied some some music theory, uh, you know, at home, not, not at a school like you, but I understand the modes and kind of. So that's that's complicated stuff, really. If you think about it. Yeah, yeah. And I always said, I was like, you don't have to be the Spock Star Trek science of, of theory, yeah. but just a little bit under under your belt, just a little bit. It sounds cool. You know? Yeah, you know, and it just and it's just a tool like working on your car. You know, I mean, you can't work on your car unless you get that half inch wrench. Yeah, you know, so it's just kind of a if you're in a rut coming up with a riff. Well, hey, let me try this a little bit. Oh, hey, that worked. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know. Um, wow, <laughs> very true, very true. So uh, you know? l- let's go back in time a little bit. How did you land the incantation gig uh, with John? How did that happen? Uh, well, I first played with them in late 2002. Yeah. And I was playing a gig at this gas station. It was like a local, you know, kids thing. Um, and then he just happened to show up. He was like one of four people in the audience. And then, uh, he just said, Hey, we're, you know, we're looking for a player. So I joined up with them. And then I played with them through the Blasphemy album. Um, the album was already done, but I did all the touring for that album. And then I left then to become a music teacher. Um, <clears throat> I left them, and then it wasn't until we reconnected when... Um, music teacher, you said? Yeah, yeah, I became wow. a music teacher. Very cool. Uh, yeah, awesome, Here awesome. in hometown. So I did that for 11 years, uh, teaching music. And then I went on to... Uh, well, Joey Lombard, the, the bass player of NCAN, uh, passed away. Yeah. And uh, me and him were really close on tour. So uh, they contacted me and said, "Hey, he passed away. If you want to come to the funeral, so I, I did." And then we just got to talk, and and then uh, you know stayed in contact. And then um, I think it was Durgis of Elysium. I think their guitar player was leaving the band. Um, well, probably the same situation that happened to me. You know what I'm thinking about it. But uh, I came in, and then I finished recording that album. Nice. Uh, the Durgis album. So there's a there's maybe three songs or four songs on that album that i did all the guitars okay cool Uh, so i did that did all the touring for that and then we did uh okay that was what rights of the locust i think Uh and then i did a lot of the guitar recording for that so did all the touring for that and then we came out with this new uh this new one and then (laughs) i did a lot of guitar recording for that album (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'd say seventy percent of that album is my guitar playing, and really? people don't even know. Yeah, I did a lot of recording for that man. You know, anything that's fast is 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 I did all the recording for it's it, and and, yeah. a, and a lot of those harmonies and everything. Um, you know, I was coming up with it because I was like, what, what's instead of doing the 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 third or fourth harmony, that's where I started adding the jazz harmonies in there, and that's what was giving it that uh, yeah really eerie eerie sound. You know. Exactly, yeah. Uh, type thing. And then, uh, obviously, I was out after, right after the record came out. and <clears throat> So we didn't tour for that, or I didn't tour for that one. But <clears throat> what happened there? So, yeah. did, did you get fired, or did you just quit? or? Uh, they fired me. So Okay. Yeah, and they released a statement that I was too good for the band. Oh. Uh, that they had to let me go, but, you know, but it's just like, okay, you know, a lot of my leads are on that album, a lot of my guitar playing is on that album. Yeah. You know, so it was just kind of a kind of a BS thing, personally. Yeah, I think you know, and uh, yeah, there, there's just more. There's just more to it, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we were getting ready to record that album, and uh, you know, uh, Kyle called me. I'm like, hey, you guys, ready to come in the studio and record tracks? I was just like, well, I kind of can't. And he goes, well, I was like, I've been trying to get hold of him for like three, three, three and a half months. You want to return my calls or texts or phone calls or anything? So we could get the guitar tab together. I was like, "How how can we go into the studio when I'm not getting any return phone calls or nothing?" He goes, and "He was like for real," and I says, "Yeah, you know what I mean." So it just that's when the attention started. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So it was just kind of like, okay, we're going in the studio to record this album, 
I need these parts so I can rehearse them and practice and be prepared. Yeah. And you're too busy to answer the telephone. You yeah. know what I mean? It's kind of weird. So yeah. Told, yeah. Yeah. And so I told Kyle, I was like, dude, I, I can't get nothing back. So he had to call. I'm thinking, okay, why are you even being the middle guy here? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know, so, but uh, yeah, it was right around th that time, and then we did the tour that last year. The tour, I started having some serious problems with my hands, and um, you know, I was going to the doctor and, and getting hand therapy and stuff, and they just kind of figure out, you know, I would just go through about 50 picks a show, I just kept dropping them, you know, and I was getting these weird pains where they would just cramp up. Oh, wow, and um. You know, they wanted to put injections on my hands and stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I really started noticing. So my guitar plan was kind of, <clears throat> you know, really just suffering the last year. Um, and then uh, I says, no, you're not sticking nothing in my hands, you know. And then actually I started taking a, a Tai Chi class. Okay. And, yeah. and exercising with my hands that way. And the pain went away. You know what I mean? And it was gone. Really? Like, oh, it must have worked. So the whole Morbid Angel tour, I mean, I, I just felt that I was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Very cool. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, it was it was real pain. It, I mean, it was painful, you know? We'd, we'd do an outside festival, and we'd start the song, and I'm like, okay, hands, it's time to go, and they want to go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I uh, never did figure out what was wrong there, you know? So, uh, wow, that's I weird. I just don't know if it was, you know, being tired and not warming up properly, all those, you know... Because sometimes, I mean, we'd get off the plane, go right to the venue and start playing, yeah. you know. <laughs> and, a guitar, you know, as a guitar player, it's just, you got to warm up, you know. Yeah. Or we're going to cause some, some damage, you know. It's like an athlete running out on the field without stretching, <laughs> you know. He, he ain't going to do too good. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be cramping up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think that's that's a lot of that had to do with that, you know. But uh, thank God it went away, but now I do warm-ups you know, even if I'm going in to record, I'll do a half hour warm ups. You know, yeah. and uh, just That's to good. get the blood going and everything. You know, because I definitely don't want to have a, a hand injury. You know, yeah. So, so. that's cool. So uh, the speaker Dallas uh, Toller Wade, uh, he plays a, a solo on this jam. Is he only a guest, or was he supposed to join the band at some point? No, he's yeah, he's just a guest. Yeah, um, he did uh, solo on the single. That just came out, and then he sang uh, some verses in uh, "Living Sacrifice" song. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it has that song. Has uh, Tucker starts it out, then it's Dallas, and then we had uh, a guy that filled in for Incantation, Mark Smith, um, finishes it out, and then him and Dallas kind of do, uh, you know, like a dual harmony thing at the end. So it came out pretty good. It's cool to have three singers on there. Um, oh, very so cool. Yeah, it came out really, really good, you know, and uh, yeah, Dallas was just a last minute thing, you know, I mean, it was just going to do a guest solo and then, oh, hey, you know, you want to do some harmonies and then, you know, he's so busy with his own band, so um, <clears throat> it just kind of came down to just some harmonies and a lead, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what's, uh, what's behind the name Arise from Worms? Well, it's a couple things, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kinda covered a we kind of covered it, and we didn't even we we probably didn't even know. But uh, uh, the one thing was my brother back in the day that passed away. He, you know, somebody would do something real shitty, like, "Oh, you friggin' worm, man! Don't be a worm! <laughs> you know, don't be a worm in life." So it always stuck with me. I was like, "Yeah, man, this guy's being a friggin' worm." You know, so it always stuck with me. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, when all that, uh, you know. I call it BS crap, went down, you know, with them guys. I just said, well, I said, some of these guys were my best friends, and I haven't heard from them in two years, you know. And uh, and just the situation, how I felt personally, I said, well, rise up from worms. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's where the name came from, you know. It was totally uh, based off of that, you know. It was just like, uh you know, family like that, who the hell needs enemies, you know? Yeah, but, uh, it's a cool name. It's a very cool yeah. name. Yeah, a lot of people say, how do you, yeah, that's kind of unique. And then I tell them, oh, yeah, I, I can see that, you know? But, uh, yeah. you know, when when you're with people for over eight and a half years in your life, every day, recording every day, and touring and all that stuff, you know? And then it's just kind of like, boom, you yeah. know? Um, I just felt personally you know i won't go too too much into it even though i did but 
they all should have, we all should have just sat down and talked like gentlemen yeah. and went over it and said, hey, Sonny, this isn't working. This is what we're thinking. Uh, you know, th- this is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Nothing happened like that. <clears throat> it was just basically, well, we're moving on without shred guitar and and uh, good luck, and we're playing th- 70,000 tons of metal, and you ain't. <laughs> so Whoa. Basically, yeah, so that's basically, that's how it basically <laughs> you know, went, you know, and I was just like, oh, man, you know. <laughs> so I just said, you know, and I was just about to say, you know, I pull all my guitar tracks out, you know, I was, I was going to flip out and everything, but I wasn't. I, I just, okay. Yeah, cool. I Walked in the studio, I closed the door and shut out the whole world for, uh, God, over a year, and then here we are, you know, so. Well, you got a good project here, you got a good name, you got a good uh, good music, good musicians, you know, so you got a good yeah, future Steve, here. Yeah, Steve, you know, Tucker, he, he man, he's just a professional, man. Oh, you yeah. Know? I mean, I, oh, we, we didn't change anything. It was just, boop, pull the feathers up, perfect, done. Same thing with Flo, done. You know, uh, even with Mark and, and, and Dallas, I, and nothing. I just told everybody, do what you want to do and what you feel the song needs. I listened to it and I was like, great. I mean, just because I don't like this one little three second part doesn't mean 500 people aren't going to go, that's badass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you know, they're just great musicians and I, I couldn't ask for anything better than them and i even said quite a few times as says i I, don't, I refuse to uh probably work with anybody else i'm just happy with these guys and and uh you know even the engineer chris uh oh yeah you know, the guitar, you know i just said I, nobody could touch my stuff except for you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you gotta try you, ha- you gotta have some trust in there somewhere yeah 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 you know and then and just uh you know and then all, of course my engineer guy here uh andrew desantis i mean a lot of this wouldn't have happened without him uh as far as getting the tracks together and 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 all that stuff i mean he he definitely uh helped quite a bit uh <clears throat> with that department of, of getting things organized to everybody and you know making sure stuff was tight because sometimes i'll go in the studio and I'm in there so long. I don't even know if I'm on the on with the Metrodome anymore. You know, <laughs> you just start getting nu- you just you know you start getting numb. You know, and uh, I was like, man, you gotta come. Li- I need somebody else to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, and it's like, you know, it's like the the full length we're working on. I sent some tracks to Flow. Okay. And Flow sent me a message, and he goes, like, oh, what'd you think of the you know the two songs? Because we send two songs at a time, so nobody gets overloaded. And uh, he goes, well, bro, honestly, he goes, you just, you sound tired. You, re- <laughs> you really sound tired in some of the rhythm playing. That's not your normal, uh, you know, spank, spank uh, picking. You know what I mean? Yes. And I yeah. said, oh, all right, let me take a break from it for a couple of weeks. So I did, not I came back to it, and I was like, whoa, yeah, man. I sound like I didn't get any sleep for three days or something, you know. So uh, went in and re-recorded it and then reset it, and then he was like, oh, there we go. You know, so. <laughs> You get burned out really quick. <clears throat> I can imagine that, yeah. Yeah, the last Incan album, I mean, I was, whew, dude, I was burnt. You yeah. know, I mean, just anything I was playing, I was like, I can't even tell anymore. It just sounds like a wall of noise because we're in there. We'd go into the studio 8 o'clock in the morning. We wouldn't leave till 8 o'clock at night. <clears throat> 12 hours, right? Yeah. All day, yep. Some people, yeah, some people don't know that. Some fans don't know, you know, all that process, so. That's cool. Yeah, and it went like that. You know, I, I would go out to uh, to Columbus where Kyle's studio is, and we would record that long, you know. And Kyle's like, dude, I don't know how you go all day without a sandwich. And I was like, no, if I eat, man, it's, we, we're done recording for the day. <laughs> <laughs> no food. Uh, yeah, no food, no nothing. Then 8 o'clock, I'd eat like a goddamn pig, you know. <laughs> <laughs> pig out, yeah. Pig out afterwards. So, yeah. so as far as uh, your guitars, what gauge uh, strings do you use uh, for the musicians asking? Um, for the Arise stuff, I use, yeah. uh, tens, tens I use, uh, and I think it's 10 to 52, I think. I'm not sure what the low B is because I, you know, it's all seven string stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's standard tuning. I don't tune down. Okay. 440. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 440. Yeah. I just, and I did, the reason why I did that is because, um, the orchestra guys, oh, was yeah. all tuned down like that. There you they're go. like, Oh yeah. They're like, what's, what's going on here? Even though they could. You know, we could kind of write around it, but quite a, quite a few of them are like, yeah, Man, it's not, it, it just was sounding funny. You yeah. Know? And, uh, so yeah, I was like, well, you know what, four forty for everything, and then I don't have to worry about if a keyboard player comes in and puts some 
you know, background fills in. He, he doesn't have to retune his keys and, you know, so. Uh, exactly. But it came out good, though, and I think with it tuned up like that, actually made the recording cleaner. Yeah, awesome stuff, yeah. awesome. You know, so, so. How about the, the scalloped frets? Uh, why do you use that uh, instead of a, a regular? What's the, why that choice? Well, the scalloped frets actually, when I was 14, I walked into a music store and I seen an Ingve Malmsteen hanging on the wall. Yeah. And I worked two years of mowing grass for that goddamn thing. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, I wanted that guitar. I'd go in every week with the payment, you know, they let me make payments on it. But uh, he goes, dude, once you go scalp, man, you never go back. And I was like, God, I didn't really know what a scalp was. It just looked cool. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, so I started playing it, and then it's just more control, I think. You know, you get a better grip on the strings, you know, or Ingve Mounsing says, you can really grab the string by the balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's why I use them. And then I went, tried to go back to a regular fretboard. I kind of experimented a, a little bit when I was on tour with NCAN. And yeah. Oh, I'd run right off the fretboard. Yeah. You know? I would be like, Tink. I'm like, oh my God, I, I can't believe it. I can't feel. <laughs> you know, yeah. the wood was throwing me off, and I would pull right off the neck. And so, yeah, all my guitars have to be uh, uh, scalloped. I don't do the real deep scallop anymore, just a light. Okay. Just enough, just enough to where the wood's not touching my fingers. Because uh, I used to go super deep. You know, and I was like, I don't need to do it that deep, you know. And uh, yeah, so just a light scallop on all the guitars anymore. But my signature guitars that are coming out um, through Halo, yeah, they're all scalped. And uh, Halo, okay. So where can yeah. we find Halo on Facebook and Halo Custom? Yeah, yeah Halo Custom Guitars. Yeah, yeah. I got the uh, it's called the Artemisia uh, signature guitar coming out. It's got twenty five frets, seven string, um, black chrome pickups, the Kaler tremolos, fan frets. Um, it's got the uh, Pale Moon fretboard. Nice. Uh, on it. Uh, wal walnut, maple, ash. Um, they came out really, really cool. Yeah, very, very cool. If you send me a message after we talk here, Philly, I'll send you some uh, prototype pictures. That'd be great, uh, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, you can check it out, you know. But uh, they built a, a red one for me, and I went out on the road for a couple of years with InCan with it. It's kind of like, you might have seen it. I used it in a lot of pictures. It's a very bright red. Okay. It's like a candy apple metal flake red. When I was over in Europe, everybody was like, dude, that fucking color just sticks out, man, you know? Yeah. And, and I found the color at a drag racing show. Really? <laughs> yeah, this, this old timer had this, like, you know, 55 Chevy, 57 Chevy. And I go, oh, my God, I got to ask what color that is, you know? And everybody's like, he ain't going to tell you, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I go over there, and he goes, oh, it's metal flake candy apple. And I was like, oh, my God. So it's actually car paint on my guitars. It's not the normal lacquer uh, that they use. Oh wow! Uh, okay. I pulled that out of the case. I was like, you, you, "Your guitar smells like a brand new car all the time." <laughs> <laughs> Is it a car or a guitar? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, they uh, they scoop the back of the neck and all that and all that stuff. It, it's pretty good. And I took it on the road with me. I said, "Well, it's got to last for the road." Yeah. Because those guitars take a beating, man, and it did. I never had one problem with it. And I says, "I think this design is is a go," you know, uh, for it. And I just said, "Let's add one more fret." Uh, on it just for uh, shits and giggles, 25 frets instead of 24, because I like to grab that D Dorian scale up there. Yeah. And I, and I always like to go like D, E, F, that little Paul Gilbert lick, like, and I'm like, man, yeah. without the 25th fret there, I can't do that right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, but that's why we did that, because people always like, why'd you go 25 frets? And then I tell them, well, that, you know, that Dorian mode's right there. And I go, yeah, yeah that is true, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting, so. yeah, interesting. So there you go for musicians asking. So, uh, um, so as far as uh, touring, uh, I mean, as far as Tucker, I mean Trey and those guys, they don't they don't tour much. I mean, maybe once a year. So, what are the chances of us seeing a rise from Worms on the road in 2022? There has we gotten a lot of offers, and there's been a lot of talk about it. You know, um, Flo can't really do anything uh, because of the pandemic where he's at. Oh. Um, so he's kind of, you know, kind of a little bit of a stuck situation. I mean, even for his other band, you know, he's supposed to do a lot of stuff overseas, which is getting canceled already again. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and then Tucker, you know, he's like, he's just waiting for more material for me. And plus he has his two other projects going on. So, uh, um, but yeah, we, uh, I mean, we've been asked quite a bit to do something later on, you know, super late in the year of, of 22. Um, 
So like I said, we could get a good package and, and it's and it's decent for us, you know, and I can yeah. bring it to the table. You know, I gotta bring it to the table, you know, for for uh, Tucker and Flo and see if they if they're interested. You know, I was gonna hope, you know what I mean? And they're like, oh, let's slowly build it up, man. You know what I mean? Let's, we gotta get a song out first, get people talking. And uh, That's some badass and, music, you know, man. It's just incredible, incredible metal, man. Awesome. You know, so it's slowly getting there, you know. Um, you know, but uh, I think management was more talking, they want us to get on some festivals. Yeah. Uh, first, before we actually do a tour tour. You know? Yeah. Me I'd, rather, me, I'd rather do the tour tour. Yeah. You know. Because uh, the festivals I've learned over the years, you know, it's funny. It, it's just, you don't sell shirts, you don't, and your merchandise is your paycheck. Yeah. You know, when you come home from a tour, you, you got to pay your your rent and you got to pay your gas bill. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah. I can't be over going. Hey, we did a sold out show. Great. You got to shut up, bros. Uh, but I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, so uh, exactly. And, yeah, and I, and I learned from those giant. You know, people go, "Look at that giant festival you play," and I'm like, "Yeah, it was cool and everything, but you just don't sell your merch and stuff there." You know, yeah. like I remember we did. I can't remember what it was. It was like, you know, ten thousand people, and would we sell one shirt? Yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, "No way!" You got to pay some you bills. Know? Yeah, you got to pay bills. And like, yeah, and they're like, "Well, dude, you know, the shirts go up fifteen minutes before you play. They're on the wall as you're playing." And they're down 15 minutes later because there's so many bands. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, I didn't know that. You know, so it was a big learning experience, you know. But um, yeah, I understand yeah, it. it. You know, and then and then the festival takes a percent, a, a big percentage of sales. You know, and it's just like it was a huge learning experience. You know, and uh, you know after eight years of doing it, the ooh and the ah of playing a festival like that. You know, it's more like, okay, I. I got a car payment when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get you evicted. Know? I don't want to lose yeah, a car. Yeah, I don't want to get evicted, you know, even though I'm having a great time, you know. But, <laughs> yeah, so that kind of kicks in, you know, just for musicians to yeah. know, you know. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. In the first couple of years, I'm like, yeah, we're playing all oh, man, Europe, you know, I was so excited and everything. But then as you get a little older and you start learning the business and how things work and you start going, whoa. Yeah, yeah, it's, oh, my, a, it's, a, I gotta, it's a harsh world yeah. out there, yeah. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. You know, I remember this is a true story. This is a true story. I got to tell you. So we're on tour and me and the fill in drummer one time, we literally didn't have nothing to eat after the show. Damn. We're, like, we're flat broke. We're like, what the hell? Man, what the hell? So we're looking through the tour bus and everything, you know, and especially those tour buses, dude, you could fit almost 20 some guys in there. Yeah. You know, and if you ain't hiding some of your food, someone's going to eat the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we get done, and I was like, we found this old instant, there's a true story, I swear to God, this old instant mashed potatoes in one of the drawers. <laughs> and it was dated, and I remember, I was like, I think it's the sound guy from Dark Funeral two years ago, because they had the same blue tour bus. I looked at the drummer, drummer looked at me, I was like, hell to do, we're hungry, so we heated up the microwave, and we shared this. And then we're sitting there, we're eating this mashed pota- instant mashed potatoes, I go, wait a minute. We just did a sold-out show. Yeah. We sold out of merch. We were out of merch. You know, Jim, Pat, you know. And we're on this tour bus, and we're eating instant mashed potatoes because we're flat broke. Does that make sense? <laughs> and he looked, just looked at me and he goes, yeah. I didn't think of it that way. And I'm going, yeah. What's wrong with this picture here? <laughs> yeah, that's life right there. Some people don't know that, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Harsh. this is like, now, now that's death metal for you. <laughs> yeah, those are true, true stories, man. Wow. That's a cool story right there. Wow. Very oh, cool. I'll never forget that. Yeah, and it's funny. He just brought that up. I talked to him not too long ago. He goes, hey, remember when we found that mashed potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was funny because I had the sound guy's phone number, and I texted him. I said, hey, did you leave any food in this drawer here? And he goes, yeah, I think I left some instants in there, dude. And I go, I was like, yeah, we're eating it right now. And he goes, yeah, it's like two years old. <laughs> <laughs> we're hungry. <laughs> Yeah, we're hungry. We got to eat this instant here. It's a good thing we had water. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very yeah. cool story. Wow, that's thanks for sharing that. That's very oh, cool. Wow. Oh, dude, I could tell you some stories. You'd probably be like, "Holy fuck, we'd be here for like two hours." <laughs> <laughs> wow, is that that way people know what musicians go through? You know that people should know. You know, uh, it's not. It's you know, tough. Yeah, it is tough. It's not all. You know, I used to have friends locally go, you know, they'd see the tour bus and, and pictures and like, oh, it's amazing, blah, blah, blah. I had one guy goes, dude, 
how come you're still living in the ghetto? Yeah. And, yeah. and I go, what do you mean? And I, and I go, well, this is my home here. You know, it might be the ghetto, but it's it's my home. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but you're out on, you got the tour bus playing for thousands of people, dude. I see all the pictures. You got to be banking. And I was like, yeah, dude, this is just like going to a normal day job. Yeah. Scrape it by the bottom of the barrel. It's not like this mega money that even, you know, I said some of these rap guys are showing their jewelry and their expensive cars. I was like, dude, that's all rented shit. They don't, they don't own that. Yeah. You know? I says, that's why you always see them at the end of the year, uh, how many millions of dollars in debt because they don't pay taxes. <laughs> yeah. True. Yep. All true. All true that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So. That's uh, it's real life and real situations. Very cool. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just definitely, you know, it's like going to, to your normal day job. Yeah. You know, making you know, making a little bit more than minimum wage, just paying the bills and, yeah. and just scraping by. Same thing. It's just that you're on the road playing shows. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's our passion. Once a musician, always a musician. You know, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So so before we let you go, Sonny, uh, uh, would you like to send a, a message to your fans uh, listening to this podcast? Well, I don't consider anybody a fan. I consider them all friends. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> that's a better word right there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I just because people, oh, I'm a big fan. No, you're not. You're you're my friend, man. Yeah. And I, I used to tell them that, and I go like, like you know, at the show in Kansas. Goes, oh man, you know, he's Sam Allen. I go, and I just said, I used to sit there and go, "Are you my friend?" And he was like, "Yeah." Uh, then that's all he know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's all it's all my friends out there that that I made, uh, you know, in the U.S. and overseas and, and anywhere. Uh, just keep practicing. Practicing and record and record and record. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the best advice I can give anybody. Very you know? cool. Very, very yeah. cool. Thank you, Sonny. Make sure you record. <laughs> Th thank you for making time. We appreciate that. And uh, Oh, yeah. Thanks for bullshitting, man. I, I love bullshit with people. It's been a while since I got the bullshit. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's... Yeah, they got me stuck in this studio, dude. It's like, no, you got to go record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is like... And then in the recording studio, there's no windows, so I have no, I don't, I don't know what time of fucking day it is, you know? You're in jail, basically, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get up, I walk into that studio, and then, I, dude, I probably, sometimes I don't leave till 5 a.m. in the morning. Wow. Just trying, especially on this, this next full length, I mean, uh, I just went freaking crazy with some of the guitar parts, you know? Um, the single that came out now, it, it, you know, a lot of guys were like, well, dude, that's your radio song. It's not as crazy. You know, and then my one friend, Gary, he's like, dude, it still sounds crazy to me. <laughs> what's, what's the other shit sound like? <laughs> Axis of the Void, too. Voivod, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Very cool. But, we can't wait to hear the rest of the stuff, man. I'm excited. I think you'll like it. Yeah. I think you'll definitely like it. You know what I mean? Um, if you like this one. I do. And uh, it's funny, little, you know, these little shredders, man. I can't believe it. People sending me. Hey man, do you got guitar tab for the for the song? I want to learn those arpeggios, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even think that far ahead. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't think somebody would want them. You know what I mean? It yeah. Like, it sounds like what the one kid saying goes. It almost sounds like there's that old popsicle stick cut in your bicycle tire. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And I says, that's when you know you're a clean shredder is when somebody says. Your, your picking hand sounds like a, a popsicle stick caught in your bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Good comparison right there. Appreciate that, man. Uh, we'll keep in touch, okay? Yeah, absolutely, bud. So, thank you. So, support Arise from Worms. Uh, Arise is A-R-I-S-E, okay? So, it's not Rise. Arise from Worms. Support them on social media. Share their video. Uh, purchase, download. Uh, be looking out for their EP. That's coming out very, very soon here. And uh, that badass track in there, that acoustic track that Sonny talks about, is uh, something to look forward to also for all you acoustic uh, fanatics. Uh, so check that out. And for now, enjoy their latest video and single, Axis of the Voivod 2. Some awesome stuff featuring Dallas Toller Wade, uh, formerly of Extreme Band Nile. And uh, a great shout out to Sonny. Uh, thank you for making time and talking to us, of course. And a shout out to Steve that's been on our show before. Steve is a great uh, legend in the death metal scene, of course, uh, currently with Morbid Angel also, and his band also, War Father. So a shout out also to Flo, a great extreme drummer. So anyways, uh, thank you guys for supporting us one more time. Uh, I truly appreciate your support downloading 
our uh, social media support. Thank you. Thank you for hearing us, listening to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, TuneIn Radio, and all of the above. Anything in any way of uh, supporting our podcast, we appreciate it, guys. So thank you. Don't forget to keep it metal. That metal interview.